Hey everybody, you're looking at a bunch of dudes on the internet because that's who we are. We have beer in front of us. This is Jason Kirk, Spencer Hall, Ryan Nanny, and myself. My name is Dan, and we're here right now to discuss coaches. And we're gonna give them some grades because all sorts of enormous schools have hired new guys to take over their programs, many of them with huge names. So I'm gonna start with, let's start with the ACC because it felt like they made the biggest splash. Jason, which coach in the ACC to you jumps out and, and how do you evaluate the decision to hire him? I'm gonna give the whole ACC an A. I feel like uh, the, the entire ACC, they, they followed a pretty simple model, which is hire coaches who've won a lot of games. Yes. Uh, that tends to work better <laughs> than other models, such as hiring coaches who haven't won ever, ever won any games. Yep. You know, Mark Rick to Miami seems like about the best fit possible uh, of any new coaching hire. Uh, you know, Justin Fuente is, is, if he can bring some offense to Virginia Tech and pair it with uh, Bud Foster, who they're keeping, uh, th it's hard to see how that goes wrong. Uh, I just thought across the board, the ACC picked a model and stuck with it. And it, it, it's about the most reliable one there is in such a sport with, you know, no reliability at all. And it's also to mention Dino Babers to Syracuse, who does have a system that appears like it would be very friendly in a dome. And uh, my favorite, and, and Bronco Mendenhall yeah. to Virginia. So, what do you? How do you give that a grade? So, I sort of, I look at it like we are judging a dunk contest, except those dunks are coaching hires. Right. And in this example, UVA is Nate Robinson. Okay. Just out of nowhere, you're like, <laughs> oh my God, they did that! Mm -hmm. I didn't even know he still played. And that's what this hire of Bronco Mendenhall was, because it just came out of nowhere. Yeah. And was, I think, beyond anything we imagined the. Uh, reasonable coaches Virginia could and would hire ceiling. In was. talking in talking to some people here familiar with how that went down, a lot of people found out about that the morning of. Yeah. And they saw like text and they're like, no, this can't be true. And they just <laughs> moved on with their days. Stupid internet. Uh, Spencer, what jumps out to you? I guess it's sort of an ACC school, even though technically Maryland mm -hmm. is in the Big Ten. <laughs> yeah. I know. It's an it's an easy ACC transition. ACC Emeritus. Maryland hires DJ Durkin, who of course yeah. has spent time at Florida and most recently Michigan and has hired every single recent former head coach. Yeah. Is Maryland in a better place than they were, say, two, three years ago? Oh, uh, yeah, because they, they don't have Randy Edsel. Yes, there That's it is. good. <laughs> I mean, if, you are, if you're here and you lose a Randy Edsel, guess what, you're, you're under par. Well done. <laughs> and Durkin, Durkin will recruit. Uh, that's one thing that Edsel never really got going at Maryland. You know, despite having uh, Mike Loxley around right. on his staff, for some reason they just had these mysterious recruiting difficulties. Right. Uh, I think Durkin will be a better recruiter. I really can't say much other than that because he's a relatively unproven prospect. So which falls... I don't understand how this keeps happening at Maryland, by the way. You have people who've done the job before, and you have people who've done a good job as head coach other places, and they keep uh, not doing that. They keep right. just landing, oh, he hasn't done this, and we have no track record of him whatsoever. This is true. So somewhere in the B-plus, A-minus range for Maryland as well. No, now. question mark. Oh, yeah. and just a, this is a, a big old incomplete. This yes, is a big yeah. old incomplete. Same thing you always yeah. are, not quite, Maryland, to, incomplete. not quite good right. enough to earn their way back into the ACC. This volcano you made looks interesting. Let's see if it erupts. I think if you're a Big Ten team and you don't hire an interim coach, then you get a C-plus. Mm -hmm. Fair. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, Which, and uh, multiple Big Ten teams did, so. <laughs> Perhaps the biggest hire because of the school that is doing the hiring, Georgia, hires a coach that many schools have been unable to, to pry away, I guess would be the term, from Alabama. Kirby Smart yeah. goes to Georgia, puts together a very good staff, two relatively big schools in South Carolina and, of course, Georgia make these hires. Do you like the hire at Georgia? And I'm going to go to Jason after to talk about Will Muschamp because I feel like it's too real for the middle of this table. Uh, Kirby Smart, how do you look at it? The, 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 it depends on the perspective I think you approach it from because yeah. if, the, if the question is, do you think Georgia made a good coaching hire just in a vacuum, I think the answer is probably yes. It's not sort of the typical, we're hiring this defensive assistant who's had a, you know, a short run right. of really good success. He has a sustained track record. Um, and the fact that he hasn't jumped at other opportunities probably suggests that he was being smart and waiting for what felt like the right one. Smart. If the yeah. other perspective... He was, he was being I'm smart. very good at this. Yeah. If the other perspective is, did they get better? I don't know that that's true. I don't know that they improved their situation, at least in the short term, from Mark Rick. You may disagree with that. I. Maybe? No? No. Um, okay. <laughs> I, I, I think you just keep hiring the people instead of hiring Nick Saban. Like, yeah. That's, yeah. Like, that's the thing. We're filling the SEC East with, like, the middling kids from Nick Saban's, you know, school for preternaturally talented young coaching boys. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's it. You keep taking the like B and C students out of 
his school you and wanted, making them your head coach. You wanted Jordans and mom went to big lots. I, I, you know, you keep doing this. Who's the coach who's had the most success against Nick Saban over the last two years? Ronzuck? Hugh Freeze? <laughs> <laughs> Hugh Freeze. <laughs> I'm gonna forget you said that. <laughs> but Hugh Freeze, you get somebody who has a polar opposite approach, and that's the right. idea. Is everyone says we can't keep up with Bama. Well, the reason you can't keep up with Bama is you keep hiring his mediocre assistants. If you want Saban, go get Saban. Otherwise, go get something totally different that he can't handle. Fair enough. Will Muschamp, sort of different in his own way. Yeah, I mean it's the same thing. It's uh, not only is this basically the same thing as Kirby Smart. It's we've seen him do a bad job as a head coach. And I guess the argument there, the hope for the South Carolina fan is, well, he probably learned a lot from that experience. I don't know that we saw evidence during his Florida tenure that he was learning. So uh, if he learned after that time, then that could be good. Um, you know, it's hard to say a hire won't work out. You know, if your hope for South Carolina is eight or nine wins, sure, he could probably hit that. Uh, it, you know, it, it, if, if Tennessee has a down year, if Georgia has a down year. To me, it's just, you know, it, it, it's exactly like Georgia. When are you going to think outside the box? And, uh, you know, how much, how many more of these Saban guys are, are you know, just going to keep trickling if, through the If you're suggesting that Will Muschamp had to go to Auburn for an easier educational experience, I agree with that. Well, that I'm comfortable that much, with that, that characterization. Fair. fair enough. And since the rest of the Big Ten and the Big 12 didn't make any big national hires, let's conclude with Clay Helton, excuse me, at USC, he's retained after giving the interim tag, replacing Sark. Uh, I give it about a B minus, just because he has surrounded himself with more former Trojan coaches, some relatively successful. He's promoted from within T. Martin. It just feels like, it feels a little bit uninspired to me, especially given how he finished the season and what Pat Hayden is known to do or not to do as the AD. I don't know if you guys have any strong thoughts. Well, I, I feel like with Clay, Hay Clay Helton, you're cutting out the middleman because he's right. going to end up the head coach again anyway. Right. It's, it's just what he does. He just ends up being USC's interim head coach, and now we get to find out what happens when Clay Helton himself needs an interim head coach. But, I mean, I think it's a fine hire. It's you know, it, it, it's easy to approach it and say, oh, they should have grabbed Chip Kelly. They should have simply yes. hired Chip Kelly because yep. that's so easy to do. You know, as far as their realistic options, you know, maybe they should have gone after Tom Herman or whatever. But uh, let's give Clay Helton a chance. Why not? And it now is. is the time when we just discussed Bill Cubitz for a long, long time. I, I kid. Thank Finally. you very much for watching. Jason, Spencer, Ryan, let's keep this conversation going in the comments. We'll see you soon.